this video, we will have a look at C-sharp classes, inheritance and polymorphism. Value types, delegates and classes are derived from system object. However, only classes can be used to build an inheritance hierarchy. That means only classes can derive from another class. Like in Java, classes are declared using the keyword class. C-sharp classes can have fields, constructors and methods, just like in Java. However, there are many more categories of class members in C-sharp. One of them is properties. But there are also events, indexers, operators and more. Let's have a brief look at C-sharp naming conventions. Fields, constructors, local variables and parameters are spelled just like in Java. However, methods are Pascal cased. That means methods in C sharp start with an uppercase letter. So do properties. When we look at access modifiers, we again see some similarities and differences. Private and public specify the same accessibility as in Java. However, protected provides only accessibility within the class and its derived classes. And internal is an access modifier we don't have in Java. It provides access within the same assembly. There's also a difference regarding the default accessibility for both class and struct members. In C Sharp, it is private, while in Java, the default is package private. It is possible to combine the accessibility of both protected and internal. You do that by using both keywords, protected and internal, next to each other. In that case, a class member can be accessed from anywhere within the assembly where the class was declared and also from any derived class, even if the derived class was declared in another assembly. Let's have a closer look at inheritance. Inheritance allows to create a new object based on an existing object. It describes an is a relationship. C Sharp has single inheritance, just like Java. That means a class can only inherit from one single base class. It can implement multiple interfaces though. Inheritance is a form of code reuse because public and protected members of the base class become members of derived classes. Please keep in mind though that inheritance should not be used for any arbitrary form of code sharing. We only want to use inheritance between classes where the concept of an is a relationship is given. Here is a look at the C-sharp syntax for inheritance. It looks similar to Java, however, we use the colon instead of the keyword extends. Sometimes we see a simple class header like this one. In this case, the class derives from system object. There is no need though to specify that explicitly. Every derived class needs to call the base class constructor. It can be called explicitly with colon, base and the argument list next to the constructor header, or it can be called implicitly. If the base class constructor is not called by the programmer, the compiler inserts a call to the base class default constructor. Here is an example. You can see that the base and the argument list is outside of the constructor body. So this is next to my constructor header. We could have continued in that line if there would have been more space. So we just broke up the line in the second one. But importantly, it is outside of the constructor body. And in this particular case, we were using a argument that we specified. So this was a parameterized constructor that we were calling here. Now let's have a look at polymorphism. There are two aspects of polymorphism that I want to point out. 
we could have an object of a derived class that is treated as an object of a base class. For example, when passing an object as an argument value. We could call a method on a variable of type base class and cause the implementation of the derived class to be executed. Let's look at an example of the first case. When we have an object of a derived class that is treated as an object of the base class. Here we have two assumptions. Chat1 is an instance of class Chat and Chat is a derived class of Airplane. That means I have an object of the derived class, which is Chat1. Because I assigned it to Airplane1, which was declared as a variable of type Airplane, it is now treated as an object of the base class Airplane. Airplane 1 can only access members of class Airplane. It can no longer access methods that are specific to class Jet, even though Airplane 1 is referencing a Jet object. If we tried to assign Airplane 1 to a variable Jet 2, this would not work. Not every airplane is a Jet, and the compiler doesn't keep track whether Airplane 1 is currently referencing a Jet or not. What we can do, however, is the following. We can use the as operator. Let's compare the as operator to casting. Both casting and the as operator can be used for type conversion. However, casting will throw an exception when the conversion fails, but the as operator will return null. When should we use cast and when should we use the as operator? Use the cast when you are certain that the conversion will work. If your assumption was wrong, you want to know as soon as possible and you will find out through the exception. Use the as operator if there is the possibility that a conversion could fail. In that case, you can use an if statement to decide whether you can proceed as usual or whether you should switch to a plan B. So far, we looked at an example of the first case where we have an object of a derived class that is treated as an object of the base class. Now let's have a look at an example of the second case where we call a method on a variable of type base class and the implementation of the derived class is executed. Again, we have two assumptions. Fish1 is an instance of fish and fish is a derived class of animal. If the method move was only declared in class animal, that very implementation would be executed. However, if the method move was overwritten in class fish, the fish version would be executed. I won't elaborate on this polymorphic behavior because I assume that you know it already from Java. I do want to use this example though to talk about the keyword virtual. In Java, every method can be overwritten, unless we declare it final. c -sharp chose another route. In c -sharp, only virtual class members can be overwritten. Class members that are overridable are methods and properties. There are a few ways to indicate that a class member is virtual. Typically, we do that by using the keyword virtual. However, all members that are marked with the keyword abstract or override are implicitly virtual. So are members of interfaces. Here is an example where we override the method move in class fish. First of all, we need to ensure that the class is overridable. We do that by declaring the method move in the base class animal as virtual. Next, we need a method declaration in class fish that provides an implementation that is specific to the derived class. Notice the keyword override. 
it is required and not optional, like the override annotation in Java. Notice also how the name, the number type and order of parameters, the return type, and even the access modifier match the base class implementation. If we declare a new class that derives from fish, let's say saltwater fish, we could again override the method move from class fish. The method move in class fish does not include the keyword virtual, but overridden methods are implicitly virtual, and thus a derived class can override the overriding method again. If we decided that the implementation in class fish should no longer be changed by derived classes, we would have to seal the method. The keyword sealed prevents a class member from being 